shelter now. So it's a very, very serious situation here across Israel. It's a state of emergency. The United States stands with Israel. While we are starting this broadcast with a developing story from West Asia, where Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant says Hamas has launched a war against the state of Israel. It's easy to tell you a flat story. It's easy to show you what's happening around the world. We do the difficult part. This weapon has been banned, but the US, Ukraine and Russia do not find the bombs problematic. We also tell you why what's happening. A new drug is making a difference in the fight against Alzheimer's. This medicine helps slow down a patient's cognitive decline. We look beyond the text. We give you context. Is China preparing for a war in the Himalayas? And tonight, we come to you with some proof. Hypocrisy is stunning. Do leaders mean what they say? Do they ever say what they mean? To find out how real news affects you, your decisions. Just when Iran took one step in the right direction, its moral police is planning to drag it further back. And once again, the victim will be women. Watch Gravitas. We don't impose our views. Did India threaten to ban Twitter? Either that or Jack Dorsey is lying to you. That is Gravitas. We let life breathe through our show. Gravitas, the informed show for an intelligent audience. Hello, welcome to this world. Vladimir Amelian joins us from Kiev and he is currently on the front line fighting Russian troops. We believe that the world should be ruled by democracies. Yeah, I was interviewing you on television a couple of weeks back. That's right. And you said, if you really want to understand Jerusalem, why don't you come here and see it? And you came? Here I am. Mass shooting after mass shooting after mass shooting. Why this cannot be fixed? There are 425 million guns in the United States, which is more than the population. The problem here is Trump has been able to make the argument that this is a political prosecution and that he's being singled out unfairly. We defend our nation. You are saying we could have a cure for cancer. We'll have treatments for many cancers in this decade and they're going to be, come from India. Downside is that it could potentially wipe us out. But, but let's start with the upside first. The up Good evening, America. You're watching World DNA with me, Raisha Sehru. And on the show today, the United States government has used an emergency authority to allow the sale of 14,000 tank shells to Israel without the congressional review. While on the other hand, the United Nations World Food Program has clearly said that 36% of Gazans are now experiencing severe hunger. We'll be tracking all of that on the show today, but first, the headlines. In a surprise move, U.S. government skips congressional review, uses emergency authority to allow sale of about 14,000 tank shells to Israel. University of Pennsylvania President Elizabeth McGill resigns following intense backlash from donors, politicians, following an anti-Semitism testimony before U.S. Congress. Venezuela's president to meet Guyana counterpart next week as territorial dispute escalates. Tensions peak in South China Sea. Philippines accuses China of obstructing government vessels trying to supply to its fishermen with water cannons.
श्रीलंका प्लांजेस इन टू डार्कनेस नेशन एक्सपीरियंसेस कंट्री वाइड पावर आउटेज ड्यू टू सिस्टम फेलियर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड स्क्रैम्बल्स टू रिस्टोर पावर Pressure mounts on Manchester United manager Eric Our top focus in world DNA the United States government has bypassed a congressional review and has used an emergency authority to allow the sale of about 14000 tank shells to Israel The move indicates Washington's undeterred support to Israel in the ongoing war amid its continued offensive in Gaza the U.S. State Department on Friday used an Arms Export Control Act emergency declaration for the tank rounds worth $106.5 million for immediate supply to Israel. As for the Pentagon, however, the White House has been pushing for an even bigger sale for Congress to approve. The larger package is worth more than $500 million and that includes 45,000 shells for Israel's Merkava tanks. These tanks are regularly deployed in its offensive in Gaza, which has killed thousands so far. The well, latest move comes as the Biden administration has found it increasingly difficult to pass foreign funding packages in a divided U.S. Congress, where the House of Representatives is controlled by the Republicans and Democrats and they hold the Senate. Earlier on Wednesday, Senate Republicans blocked an effort to provide more funding for Ukraine to fight its war against Russia in a bill that also included funding for Israel and Taiwan. Yeah. Well, I don't know much about it. Well, the U.S. State Department has justified the bypass of congressional review as it says an emergency exists for an immediate sale. Just the day before, the U.S. vetoed a UNSC resolution for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. However, the military aid to Israel also comes amid an increased pressure by the U.S. on Israel to protect the civilians in Gaza. Meanwhile, Washington has also highlighted that there is a gap between Israel's promises to protect civilians and the outcome. Take a listen. is the uh, extraordinary difficulty of this task as Israel is dealing with a terrorist adversary that intentionally embeds itself with civilians. But again, Israel has an obligation to do everything possible to put a premium on protecting civilians and maximizing humanitarian assistance. Meanwhile, the president of the University of Pennsylvania has stepped down. This in the wake of a firestorm of criticism after appearing for a congressional hearing on the rise in anti-Semitism on U.S. campuses. And this makes her the first out of the three Ivy League university heads who testified to step down. Following university president's departure, the University of Pennsylvania's Board of Trustees chair the has also resigned. I know that Elizabeth McGill was among three presidents of elite universities, namely Harvard, MIT, and the University of Pennsylvania, who faced withering criticism for their testimony during a congressional hearing on campus anti-Semitism. And this Almost a week ago, she appeared to evade the question of whether students who call for the genocide of Jews should be punished or not. I know that we need both safety and free expression. Ms. McGill, at Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment, yes. I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. Earlier, a flood of donors, politicians, business leaders, and other prominent figures called for Magill's immediate ouster after December 5th testimony before a House committee. A major donor, Ross Stevens, withdrew a $100 million grant following the controversial congressional appearance. 
Billionaire CEO of Apollo Global Management, Mark Rowan, who gave $50 million to Penn's Wharton School in 2018, renewed his demand to the board of trustees that Magill be replaced following her testimony. Meanwhile, an online petition demanding the university's board of trustees accept Magill's resignation was signed by 2,500 people. Meanwhile, more than 70 members of the Congress called for the firings of McGill and two other university presidents who appeared alongside her in Washington on the 5th of December. After McGill's resignation, that is. Now, U.S. representatives Elise Stafnik said, and I'm quoting her here, this is only the very beginning of addressing the pervasive rot of anti-Semitism that has destroyed the most prestigious higher education institutions in the United States of America. And now, moving to India, where Union Minister Minakshi Lekhi says she did not approve any answer to a question in the Lok Sabha or the lower house on India's position on Hamas, prompting the, the opposition to call for a probe on this. Now, India's Ministry of External Affairs has come out with a statement saying that a technical correction is being made to the name in the Ministry of External Affairs document. The document contained an answer to a question on the designation of Hamas as a terror organization, but she had denied signing the document. I आपके माध्यम से सबको बताना चाहती हूँ कि मैंने कोई ऐसा कागज उस प्रश्न से संबंधित साइन नहीं किया है और ये जो ब्रीच हुई है मैंने ये सीधा पीएमओ को टैक किया है डॉक्टर एस जयशंकर को टैक किया है Foreign Secretary को फोन लगाया है और कहा है इसकी जांच होनी चाहिए और हवाला दिया जाना चाहिए कि जिन लोगों ने ये ये गलत काम किया है उनके ऊपर कार्रवाई हो। To give you more context, the, the, the document had an unstarred a question posed by an opposition MP K Sudhakaran of the Indian National Congress. Now, unstarred questions in Lok Sabha require a written reply. Now, the answer simply stated. The designation of any organization comes under Unlawful Activities Prevention Act and is taken up by relevant departments. The answer given was in the name of Minakshi Lekhi. Now what kicked up the controversy was when Minakshi Lekhi denied approving or signing the response. The opposition was quick to call for an inquiry in the case. Some opposition members seeking clarification on the matter from the Minister of External Affairs said that several others, if not Lekhi, then who signed the paper? To which the MEA has now issued a statement saying, we have noted that Lok Sabha document needs a technical correction in terms of reflecting Sri V. Murli Dharan's name as the Minister of State. Lekhi also told the reporters that she had raised the issue. Now, this comes at a time when the opposition leaders are angry over the expulsion of a MP. On Friday, TM TMC MP Mahua Moitra was expelled in a cash for query issue. So thank you very much. Thank well you. Well done. It is alleged that Moitra took bribes for a businessman to ask around 50 questions in Parliament that were intended to promote his business interests. She's also accused of sharing a login details to the government portals with the businessman concerned here. Moitra says she was expelled even before she was given any opportunity to explain her case in Parliament. So thank you very much. Oh, thank well you. And now, shifting focus to Pakistan. Former Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif stressed the need to improve ties with the country's neighbours. He also made a very bold statement about how he was removed from the post of Prime Minister in 1999. The three-time Prime Minister says he was ousted from the government by late General Parvez Musharraf for opposing the Kargil misadventure. I should know that why was removed in 1993? I should know that why was removed in 1999? And we said that we didn't have to fight in Kargil, so we removed it. Well, the war began in early May 1999, that is when the Indian Army learned that the Pakistani troops had infiltrated the Indian territory. After detecting the infiltration, the Indian Army and Air Force launched Operation Vijay and successfully pushed back the intruders, who included regulars, 
of the Pakistani army. Now, New Delhi has maintained that talks and terror cannot go hand in hand as Pakistan's sponsored cross-border terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir still continues. Addressing the party's parliamentary board meeting in Lahore, the PMLN Supremo wondered how the country could achieve a global status while there were disagreements with bordering nations. The former prime minister then criticized the previous Imran Khan government for trying to sabotage the China-Pakistan economic corridor as well. हमारे दौर में इंडिया के दो वजीरियाज़म यहाँ पाकिस्तान तशीफ़ लाए मोदी साहब और वाजपाई साहब आप अपने मामलात को हमें इंडिया के साथ भी ठीक करना है अपने मामलात को हमने अफगानिस्तान के साथ भी ठीक करना है चाइना के साथ और ज़्यादा बेहतर करना है और मजबूत करना है यहाँ तो हमारे पीछे सीपेक को भी सेबोटाज करने की कोशिश की गई और जो सीपेक खुद मुझे आके चाइना के प्रेसिडेंट ने कहा इन्होंने शीपिंग ने तो उन्होंने मुझे खुद आके कहा कि मिस्टर नवाज शरीफ दिस इज़ अ गिफ्ट फॉर यू from china meanwhile the philippines and china continue the blame game in the south china sea in the latest the philippines has accused china of using water cannons to obstruct three of its vessels manila has slammed beijing calling the actions illegal and aggressive this time around the incident took place near the china controlled scarborough shoal which is a flash point between the two nations philippines national task force said that the chinese coast guard ships utilize water cannons to obstruct government vessels from supplying fuel and food to fishing boats there in response to manila's condemnation beijing has said it used control measures against the intruding philippine vessels around shoal this is not the first face off that the two nations had they that they have that they have had in the region earlier this week philippines accused china of swarming a reef off its coast after more than 135 military boats were spotted in the south china sea On 23rd of October, China released images showing collision between a Filipino supply boat and a Chinese Coast Guard vessel in the disputed territory of South China Sea. The two countries have traded blame for the collusion. China snatched control of Scarborough Shoal from the Philippines in 2012. Since then, Beijing has deployed patrol boats that Manila says harass Philippine vessels. An international tribunal invalidated China's claims to 90% of the South China Sea in 2016, but Beijing refuses to recognize this ruling. The contested waters have also become a naval flashpoint for China-U.S. ties. U.S. President Joe Biden has warned that the U.S. will defend the Philippines in case of any attack. And now shifting our focus to Iran where the family members of Iranian Kurdish woman Mahsa Amini have been banned from traveling to France by the Iranian authorities the family was leaving for France to collect top rights top rights prize award on December 9th Amini's family lawyer said that Amini's parents and brother had been prohibited from boarding the flight for France the lawyer further added that the family has been stopped to travel despite having a valid visa 22 year old Mahsa Amini died on September 16, 2022 while being held by Iran's religious police for allegedly breaching the dress code prescribed for women in the country. Mahsa Amini's custodial death sparked massive demonstrations across Iran calling for an end of Iran's imposition of a hijab or headscarf on women in the country. The secretly forces pardon me security forces called the public outcry riots and cracked down on the demonstrations killing hundreds of Iranian demonstrators dozens of demonstrators were even executed for participating in mass agitations 
The protests sparked in the aftermath of Amini's death transformed into a global movement named Women, Life and Freedom. And speaking of the prize being awarded to Mahasa Amini, the Sakharov Prize, which comes with an endowment of $53,000, was to be handed over in European Parliament ceremony on December 13th. And senior officials from Britain are in New Delhi to add momentum to the ongoing free trade agreement talks. As for the reports, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is looking to finalize the trade agreement by February 2024, and that is before the country's elections. And Vyond's principal diplomatic correspondent, Dhan Sibyl, interviewed Alex Ellis, the British High Commissioner to India, to know more about what to expect. Take a listen. The India UK FTA talks are going. Any update you can give us? And uh, will the British uh, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak travel to India? There are rumours going around that he is expected to travel in the month of January. There are always rumours. Uh, let's deal with the facts, which is we've had a high-level negotiating team here this week in Delhi, exactly to see if we can crack the toughest nuts in relation to the FTA. This is hard, uh, no doubt about it. What I saw this week was a shared will, and I have to. Give my respect to the Indian side, a really shared will, will from the top of the Indian government to see if we can make this happen. Now, there are some tough things which we have to get through, but I have to say there is a de shared determination to try to do so. And any, anything on the visit of the Prime Minister? Yeah, let's, let's deal with the FTA first and the, and the investment treaty. Well, the longest losing streak on record in Hong Kong's $4.6 trillion stock market is hurting the city's financial industry. The historic slump and job losses are adding to questions about the future of the city's position as Asia's top international finance center. Let's delve a little deeper to understand the rumblings in Hong Kong in our next report. Take a look. Hong Kong. All's not well in the Asian financial hub. Its stock market has been on a losing streak with no relief in sight. The biggest hit from the stock market downturn is on brokerage houses. The primary sources of income for brokerages are trading commissions and margin businesses. 30 local brokerages have shut down this year. That follows a record 49 closures in 2022. This comes at a time when Wall Street banks have fired dealmakers because of a decline in initial public offerings. This week saw the Hang Seng Index hit a one-year low. That puts the index on course for a fourth year of losses, the longest losing run in the gauge's history. The IPO market is experiencing its worst year since 2001. This year is poised to be the worst for Hong Kong firms' debuts since just after the dot-com bubble. Hong Kong's IPO market is down 84% from its previous 10-year average. Hong Kong's position as Asia's financial hub was already in question when China imposed national security rules. With the stock market route, the city has lost its charm further. Be your port, we on World is One. On the world of sports now, the Premier League title race is headed towards an exciting second half of the season with Aston Villa making a huge splash. The, Mer the Birmingham Bay side defeated table toppers Arsenal, and that saw Liverpool go top of the table. The Reds had the early kick off and travelled to London to take on Crystal Palace, who are managed by former Liverpool boss Roy Hodgson. Palace shackled Liverpool in the first half and were unlucky not to get ahead. They took the lead in the 57th minute after a VAR awarded penalty that was dispatched by Jean Philippi past the returning Allison. Palace were reduced to 10 men when Jordan Ayew was sent off after picking up a second yellow in the 75th minute. Mohamed Salah equalized just after for the Reds with his landmark 200th goal for the club. Harvey won it for Liverpool in stoppage time and Liverpool have scored 14 goals in the last quarter of game this season and are now unbeaten in nine games. Manchester United's top start season suffered another blow after the Red Devils were thrashed. And now from the world of showbiz. Indian star Anbir Kapoor's latest movie Animal is on its way to becoming the next Bollywood blockbuster. 
The movie has already accumulated $70 million globally, defeating movies such as Napoleon and Hunger Games. This marks Kapoor's second big release in 2023 after Tu Juti Mein Makkar. Meanwhile, Wiki Kaushal star Sam Bahadur, which released alongside Animal on December 1st, is also running steadily at the box office. The movie has already crossed the $5 million mark globally. Sam Bahadur has been directed by Meghna Gulzar and is based on the life of Field Marshal Sam Manekshaw. With that, we call to wrap. Thanks very much for staying with us. You're watching Beyond World is One. Stay tuned. Israel woke up to a barrage of thousands of rockets fired from the Gaza Strip. Hostilities have broken out between Israel and Palestine and the tensions that had been gathering steam over the course of the last seven weeks and months. The siren has gone off. I don't know if you can hear in the background what's going on. I'm going into the shelter now. So it's a very, very serious situation here across Israel. It's a state of emergency. The United States stands with Israel. Well, we are starting this broadcast with a developing story from West Asia, where Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant says Hamas has launched a war against the state of Israel. It's easy to tell you a flat story. It's easy to show you what's happening around the world. We do the difficult part. This weapon has been banned, but the US, Ukraine and Russia do not find the bombs problematic. We also tell you why what's happening. A new drug is making a difference in the fight against Alzheimer's. This medicine helps slow down a patient's cognitive decline. We look beyond the text. We give you context. Is China preparing for a war in the Himalayas? And tonight, we come to you with some proof. The hypocrisy is stunning. Do leaders mean what they say? Do they ever say what they mean? To find out how real news affects you, your decisions, just when Iran took one step in the right direction, its moral police is planning to drag it further back. And once again, the victim will be women. Watch Gravitas. We don't impose our views. Did India threaten to ban Twitter? Either that or Jack Dorsey is lying to you. That is Gravitas. 
We let life breathe through our show. Gravitas, the informed show for an intelligent audience. Hello, welcome to this world. Vladimir Amelian joins us from Kiev and he is currently on the front line fighting Russian troops. We believe that the world should be ruled by democracies. I was interviewing you on television a couple of weeks back. That's right. And you said, if you really want to understand Jerusalem, why don't you come here and see it? And you came. Here I am. Mass shooting after mass shooting after mass shooting. Why this cannot be fixed? There are 425 million guns in the United States, which is more than the population. The problem here is Trump has been able to make the argument that this is a political prosecution and that he's being singled out unfairly. We defend our nation. You are saying we could have a cure for cancer. We'll have treatments for many cancers in this decade, and they're going to be, come from India. Downside is that it could potentially wipe us out. But, but let's start with the upside first. The upsides are absolutely enormous. The potential uses of this are almost unlimited. I only discovered auto GPTs about a week ago and started writing about them. And after I started writing about them, uh, Jeff Bezos followed me on Twitter and all kinds of <laughs> crazy amounts of people have been contacting us. The show where we get you the week's biggest stories from around this world. What is the India story? It's the story of the world's biggest democracy. And welcome, you're watching We On World Is One. My name is Heem Kaur Saroya and here's a look at all the top stories that we're tracking at this hour. University of Pennsylvania President Elizabeth McGill resigns following intense backlash from donors, politicians and alumni following her anti-Semitism testimony before US Congress. In a surprise move, U.S. government skips congressional review, uses emergency authority to allow sale of about 14,000 tank shells to Israel. Sri Lanka plunges into darkness. Nation experiences country-wide power outage due to system failure. Electricity board scrambles to restore power. Tensions peak in the South China Sea. The Philippines accuses China of obstructing government vessels trying to deliver supplies to its fishermen with water cannons. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro to meet Guyana counterpart Mohamed Irfan Ali next week as territorial dispute escalates.